Can we actually turn Excel into the ultimate manufacturing and bakery manager? Hi, this is Randy with Excel for freelancers. And this week we're gonna do just that. And it's gonna be an entire complete application with BOM assemblies, where we can assemble finished goods from raw goods. We'll also have the ability to add purchase orders, complete with work orders, sales orders, and a dashboard. And if that weren't enough, we're gonna take the entire BOM assembly and we're gonna design it from scratch, starting with a blank sheet, every feature, every function, and every format right before your eyes. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. I've got a really fantastic training many many years people have been requesting a manufacturing application and this week i've combined it with a bakery manager so it's going to be an incredible training we're going to do a large portion of it from scratch and you will not be disappointed there are so many new features that you're going to learn in this training for example we've got staff resources we've got a full menu we've got customer management purchase orders we've got raw goods we can take raw goods we've got bom assemblies we'll be able to add up update and create our finished products and we can have a list of other finished products it's going to be fantastic we've also got finished goods a list of those finished goods we're going to be able to be pricing them out and of course we also have our work orders we'll be able to create new work orders here adding additional finished goods if we have a new work order we have so much to share with you so if i want to add a brand new let's say work order it's going to add all the time and all the information everything that's needed if we want to update the quantities of that we can do just that it's going to update that now this is not only for bakery but for manufacturing then we'll also have sales orders we can create sales orders and then of course a complete dashboard that we're going to have i'm going to show you how to do that the reason we've combined them is because basically when we're doing manufacturing or baking we are taking raw goods like such as active yeast or parts or simple goods and we're creating something and then we're going to sell that something so this manufacturing manager is going to take you through every single part of the process we're going to start every part we're going to start with our raw goods right raw goods are things that you buy and then you create something from it for example in baking we might have things like flour sugar butter eggs and milk and then what we're going to do is we combine them and that's where our bio assembly comes in so we create let's say a blueberry muffin it's a pastry we can have a picture of it we have a description how many we create at a given time what is the total cost of creating them and then what is the individual calculated cost now we can also add things like labor so if we want to do we can have uh, add raw goods we can add finished goods or we can even add other costs other costs could be equipment maintenance insurance labor so we can add that as well so it's going to be really really incredible so if we want to add an hour of marketing we can do just that by adding it to that so i've got so much to cover if you do like these trainings i just ask a few things all you need to do is go ahead and click that subscribe down below don't forget to smash the like button and the notification icon bell that'll ensure that you get these trainings each and every week if you do like building these applications applications I've got a fantastic course that you're going to love because not only am I going to teach you how to define design develop and deploy your own excel based applications for passive income we're going to do all that and I've got a complete accounting application that I'm including in the course so that way you have a complete accounting whatever type of application you're going to be creating you're going to have that full-scale accounting application along with the course that of course is the excel for freelancers mentorship program 132 hour comprehensive course i've got a great discounted price go ahead and click the link below and we'll see on the inside of that all right let's get started on this so this is the screen that we're going to be doing from scratch but i wanted to give you a rundown of this entire application first so that we know what is the point why do we create this well the idea is very very important anytime we're doing manufacturing we have a list of items again as i mentioned they could be other costs they could be finished goods things that you've already created maybe we're creating a compilation dessert and we want to add some croissants or something to a dessert we can do that simply by just adding those and it's going to add to that total cost and we can adjust those of course those numbers here as well so the important thing is is that we want to make sure that we're adding those up together so if we're deciding that we want to add let's say some other costs here let's go ahead and other costs maybe we want to add uh, packing or insurance or equipment depreciation or labor or advertising or packaging maybe we want to add some packaging 
maybe we want to add just uh, 0.25 of an hour packaging we can do that for labor and when we add it we just click add and it's going to add it to the total cost so we see that here i'll double check on this croissant finished good that price should be there so how do we do that how do we create this and why right so the idea is very very important right we want to be able to sell these finished goods and we have that in this application once we create those finished goods such as a chocolate cake we can then go into our sales order create a new sales order and we can choose a customer and then we can choose a sales rep and we can sell that chocolate cake so we can easily set a price and just set that sell that chocolate cake we could sell you know more than one or however we want to sell and create that sales order save or update however but it doesn't start with there we also have to first buy ingredients so what i want to do is i worked very hard on this application i want to create a beginning to end application where the first thing we do is buy right items that we're going to make we've got a dashboard here that's going to show everything else in here so what we want to do is we want to buy some raw goods so these are all raw goods right we've got a reorder quantity a minimum quantity how many do we have on hand maybe we need to buy more so our dashboard is going to tell us what is the cost what is the purchase quantity what is the grams and how is it purchased in a bag or a carton and then i've got a picture okay so the idea is simple in the fact that we have to create these products we have to create manufacture these products to before they can be sold so what we want to do is we take these raw goods and we combine them for let's for example let's say we add a brand new bom and we want to create something like a sandwich bread right so we're going to create a sandwich bread and we also want to give it a what is the type we can give it a type of pastry or bread here and we can add a picture we'll do that later and we'll just call it sandwich bread for the description and maybe we're going to create 10 breads at the same time and we want to sell each one for let's say four dollars and fifty cents okay now it's going to take what it's going to take we're going to put something into that so we're going to put some raw goods in that we need some yeast right so maybe we need 10 grams of yeast and then we can add that to the schedule here and then maybe we want some let's say some apples or blueberries no we'll just start with some flour and we need some maybe we want two eggs that we're going to put into that and also maybe we're going to put some flour into that i've put here of course we need maybe 300 grams of flour and we can add that to it so you get the idea right so we have a total cost here's our total cost of the breads so we see our total raw goods but we're also going to be actually putting some labor in right it's going to we so we go into other costs and we add the labor into that so we can add any type so maybe it's going to take one hour for our staff to do that so we add in that and that's going to cover the labor cost okay so we see we have total raw goods cost of 67 we've got uh labor cost of 45 we don't have any finished goods and so we see with that our cost per item is going to be 457 so we see that that's a problem so maybe we could probably do maybe 15 beds for that so that's going to bring our cost per item to 304 and our sales price at 450 we've got a 32 percent profit that looks pretty good so we can just save that and we've created a brand new product sandwich bread so we have here sourdough bread and we now have here sandwich bread so we can create those once we have that we can then of course sell that in our sales order so we're going the whole entire process of and so what are we doing today today we're going to do this bill of materials we're going to do this screen completely from scratch where basically what we want to do is we want to select on a finished product we want to load that product and all the details associated we want to be able to add items to that product whether they're other costs or whether they're finished goods or whether they are raw goods so we want to be able to add that to that and then we want to save it just like we did so that's all we have to do right so if we're going to have apple pie maybe we need four apples when we make an apple pie so we just click next we've got a picture that shows up there we're going to be doing this from scratch so let's start out with this and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into a little more detail in the application and how the purchase orders sales orders works this is going to be a very very good size training so make sure you grab your beverage of choice whatever you need you're going to learn so much we're going to learn so much excel skills and how to build your own application so i hope you'll stick with me through the entire process Process. this is a sample we'll be pulling up this right if we take a look inside the bio assemblies here it is absolutely blank so we're going to be starting from this and going through every step on this sheet so i hope you'll stick with us through the entire training i create these for you so i just ask a few things if you could just stick it out through the training you will learn so much your patience is greatly appreciated i spend a lot of time creating these for you and of course if you want something extra right if there's a feature i didn't put in or you got an idea that would be on patreon because each week i create an updated video and an updated workbook template that you can download inside our patreon platform it's just a few dollars a month 
it's a great way to support the channel plus you get tons of other extras including pdf downloads you get sneak peek videos you get uh you can get full video downloads if you don't have internet access you can get full video downloads that's gonna happen on patreon so make sure you join us there all right let's get started i'm gonna move this sample one i'm gonna move this uh to the side on another screen so that i can use it as reference and then we're gonna get started on this sheet this is gonna be our bom assembly reference here okay those first two columns we're going to use them for admin purposes as we've often done so i'm going to give those a distinct color i'm going to drop this down while we're formatting it and we're going to give this a color of gray and so inside here is going to be our title called bill of materials so i'm going to type that in bill of materials and then we'll just call it bom just as we've done before and then assemblies they're called different things assemblies kits boms uh, bill of materials so lots of different uh, uses for them but this can be used in any type of manufacturing so bill of materials bom assemblies make sure i spell that right and then we'll increase the font so what i'm going to do is just go to about 25 on the font here and give it a aerial uh let's say a rounded bolt so like that font now i want to give it a color a very good color unique all the way to let's say just x or y this is fine and i'm going to format those cells here we can use a control one to do that as well we're going to go with a fill and a fill effects we'll use some unique colors that we've been using with our theme here and i'll go from a little bit dark uh, to a little bit lighter here this color and then we'll just go one down on the next row below so, so let's go ahead and here format those cells and then we'll we will just uh, filter the effects and then we'll go down to this uh, secondary and then what we're going to use is use a main light color this will be our main main color for the page and we'll color everything down on that give it that light color all the way up to column c on that and down okay so we've got our coloring for our sheet now we can start adding in some references here for the field so the first thing i want to skip a column right so this is going to be i usually use a column for the spacer this allows me to space things so i never put call i never put anything it also allows me to use it for a hidden if i want to add any hidden data i can do it so i try not to use that first column because i don't want things right up against the side remember a and b will be hidden so what i'll do right in about uh d4 here i'm going to put what i want i want finished products i want a list of finished products so i can do finished products here and then all i want the on hand how many on hand you can put quant on hand so i want to know that and then I'll, I'll put a list down here so we're going to add some conditional formatting in here so this is what's going to be our list so i'm going to bold that that's going to be our header there and then up i want to color these let's do uh, control f1 that's a little bit quicker and then we're going to give it a fill effects staying within our theme here and we'll use this a uh, darker color to medium color here i like that and then we'll also bold it and add some borders around here so we stick with a, a single border color we're going to use this border color and then so we're going to use all the borders around it we'll add some uh, conditional formatting here one for alternating rows and another one for the selected row i'm going again i'm going to skip a column and then inside our first column we're going to put the finished product name so i want here finished product this is going to be for the name so we're going to have the name inside here h i and j we'll do that and then inside k i want to put the product type so product type here and then we're going to skip one and we'll go to the quantity on hand i want to know quantity on hand how many that we have on hand I'm going to add a picture here so i want to add the picture in let's say o we'll put add picture then in cob p and q we're going to be adding that picture name here so p and q so i'm going to give this a color uh quantity on hand i will not give it a white color because that's not something the user can enter maybe for new items perhaps for new items it'll be editable and then product type we're going to put that in there and then i want to put all these these are going to be in white so because they're going to be user entered fields so we'll put those in white so we have some reference on that i'm going to hold down the control and i'm going to write justify these fields here okay inside r and s that's where our picture is going to go so i'm going to go down four rows here and i'm going to give that a color white too so our picture is going to go inside here i'm going to give it a border a thick border all the way around this one here and just so we have a point of reference for that let me just raise that up so you can see that and we'll give it that color then we're going to use this dark green as our reference color a thick border all the way around clicking okay so we're going to place our picture right in here so we have some more information to add okay so next up i want to add the sales description sales so this is going to appear on the invoice what is that sales invoice or sales order sales description 
when you sell it we need to have a description for the, on the sales and we'll put that as a large field and then all the way up until about right about here i want to have the, some more information so we're going to put total raw goods cost i want to know what the total raw goods cost is for this i want to put total other costs and uh, also i want to know the total finished good cost that's important total finished goods because we can put three different types of items inside our finished product we can do raw goods other costs or finished goods costs so i want to put all this and then what i'm going to do is i want to have the costs here inside here we're going to put that so that's where i want the cost so what i'm going to do is i'm going to merge and center this and then right justify these so we have enough space so merge and center right justify these and this is where i'm going to be putting in so i'm going to format those cells and again i'm not going to color them white these are all going to be calculated fields so for i'm going to use a thick border on the down i'm going to use in the middle and the top and the left and then we'll do inside the center this dollar line okay so the idea is to put those calculated values right here all right very good so what else do i want to have under the sales description i want to have the total batch quantity total batch quantity and that means how many are we going to be building at the time when i when i build those through work orders when i create them through work orders i want to know how many we're creating so if we take a look inside the work orders just so we can go we'll go back to the home i want to show you what the work orders creating them we create those we build them through the work orders this is a work order in which we create those so that is going to be right here so the work orders for example if we add blueberry muffin we're creating the batch through the work order maybe we're the batch is 30 maybe we're going to do a double batch so we want to make sure that through the work orders we're actually going to create or produce whatever we're producing that's the work order okay so continuing on so we want to know how many we're going to be building that's going to be right here next up i want to know the total batch cost total batch cost what is the cost and then i want to know the cost per item so the total batch cost will go here inside j and then in k i want the cost per item so cost per item that's also very very important and the cost per item is going to go in m here so we're going to merge and center this one and i'm also going to merge and center this one these two are going to be the same and then i'm going to right justify that under the cost per item we're going to put the profit percentage profit percentage and then per item so that's very important how much profit are we going to be making and what are we going to sell it for so we're going to put the sales price i want to know that obviously we need to sell it for a certain amount of price and then next up i want to know the profit what is the profit amount per item profit per item that's going to go in here so inside here inside here let's select that here these cells these are going to be our fields so we're going to uh format those cells i'm going to do the border all the way around not all are going to be white the ones that are white will be into those those in which we're actually entering values we're going to do the border here i'm going to do uh, the border all the way around and then on the left side we're going to do that dotted line i'm going to do the opposite on the field so on the fields here right here we are going to do the format again format those cells this time the border here is going to be solid all the way around but i want to make sure that the dotted line is on the right side okay so the filling these are user getting entered fill so only these two in which the user will actually enter some item they'll be entering the batch quantity and the sale price so we will add a line up here and that's going to give us that upper border on the top okay it's starting to come together now and around the entire field we're going to give it a, a thick border on that so give it a very thick border so that groups everything together so let's take a look now we have a finished product we have some information on our fields that's that's going to be for everything then once our fields are set we'll be adding our shapes so that's kind of important to add them after once the shapes go then the icons go and that's the order is going to go okay we'll add in the sales description this is the large field so i'm going to merge and send that left it and make sure that's uh, colored white okay things are looking good i'm going to right justify all these fields here make sure that there's a dotted line on all of those i separate i use that dotted line here always on the right here not there not here okay perfect that's the way i like it all right so this looks good so we've got our finished product name we've got our product type here i've got a picture that we'll add here we'll merge and center this and left justify that's where our picture's name the name of the picture the actual picture is going to go in here although it doesn't matter we can merge and center this here but there's going to be no text in there we've got all the fields set up just the way we like them we've got uh, all the entered fields there's only a few fields in which the user is going to be entering data so those are all in white i like the way that let's put some information in and do the formatting so let's say we're going to make a 
raisin bagel and this product type is going to be bread now we want a drop down list and i've got some created already we've got an admin screen here i haven't had a chance to show you that yet we've got some information on that so the admin screen we have something called item types here we have raw good types we have finished good types finished good types is what i want to create so if i go into the formulas name manager and I believe it's under finished good type. All right, it's actually right here. It's not in the admin screen. So I've got a dynamic list. I like this a little bit better because as you, as we create more products, we can add dynamically here. So I actually moved it to here. And so product types, that's what we're gonna be adding inside our BOM assembly. So we'll go in here inside the data and then data validation here. We're gonna choose a list and I'm just gonna put no error on that once we do it equals product types okay clicking okay and then so but i would want to be able to enter anything here so how do we do that well we're going to go into the data validation and go back into the air and unselect the show error alert that gives the user the ability to enter anything they want this one's a bread for example we want to add a picture we're going to need a button to browse for a picture we need a sales des description so inside the sales description we're going to put soft and fluffy raisin bagel okay we're going to do let's say 24 at a time we want to sell each one for 349 and we're going to need some ingredients on that of course so we got some calculations that we're going to need pictures so here's what we're going to do we want to make sure that we're at it i want to put this as a format here of going to put currency or dollar amount that's sufficient enough for us cost also cost per item here these are all holding down the control are also costs we can use accounting or we can use currency either one will do accounting so those are going to be the cost the profit per item is also going to be there okay this one's going to be a percentage field so 0.25 is going to be 25 percent. perfect okay so i like that that's looking really good now what we want to do is we want to add in some information i want products on hand and i need some admin information here I want to know what product row we've selected i want to highlight that row whatever row we've selected so i'm going to put in here the selected product row selected product row and let's say we we put in six next up i want to know what id selected product id that means for each product each product we're going to have a unique id if we take a look inside our finished goods in this case finished goods are the same as products so here is all of our products each one has a unique id so that's the product id so i want to make sure that we include that so what is that so if we put one in here that's going to be so i also want to know the row that's associated with that so product database row that means what does that mean that means when we look on the finished goods here i want to know what row this is row four so i've got a named range called product id if we go into the name manager there's a dynamic name range under product id so if we tab here using the tab key we see that we're using the offset for that product id so i want to know i want to get the row from that if i know it is product id one i want to know the row so we're going to use equals if error we're going to run a match and what am i looking up i'm looking up this product id and i'm looking inside the product id named range i want an exact match i also want to know the row number the first one starts on row four so we're going to add three if there's an error we're going to show empty okay that's going to get us four that's what we want i also want to know the next product id next product id and we're going to use equals if error in case there's no data we're going to use the max formula product id and i want the next available one they're numerical so that's going to get us if there's an error maybe there's no data we're going to use one as the default okay very good and now on here on number nine we're going to skip a little bit and we're going to go to the selected item row if i select an item remember i have a list of items here i want to know what row has been selected we'll just put 16 there and then i want to know the selected bom item row, and that means our list of items that we're going to list down here i want to know that as well okay let's start filling in the rest of this we're going to i'm going to hold down the control i'm going to give these some unique admin colors and some borders around there so we can distinctly uh, show that they're part of admin okay so i like that saving our work so far so we're gonna have a list of products once i select a product i also want to have that product to load up all in here including the picture and i also want to have that so inside here in g column g i'm going to put select items to add to finished product so what are we going to add to that so we're going to view item type so that means are we going to what kind of item types are there there's several inside the admin screen here I've got raw goods, finished goods, and other costs. So these are the item types. And I believe I have a named range called item types. If we see here, it's called item types. 
So we can just simply add that as a drop down list. So if we're going to go back into the assembly and right here, in fact, we're going to take probably two rows here. So I'm going to merge and center that both for H and I. I'm going to merge and center that, left justify that, merge and center this, left justify it. Both of them are going to get the white background color. They're both user entered fields. One's going to allow us to search by name. So search by name. It's a nice way to quickly search. So many features, I can't possibly show you every feature in the intro, so that's why you gotta stick with me on these entire trainings so you can see everything. Below that, I wanna have the item, the quantity that we're gonna be entered, and I wanna have the unit. What is the unit, like bag or box or bottle or something like that? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these all the same color, and it's gonna be basically this color here. So I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna use the same format here and here, and I'm just gonna paste the formatting right here. Okay, I'm going to center that. This one's going to be merged and centered because it'll be our title. We're going to give these uh, very unique uh, borders on those. Control one will do just fine. And then I'm going to the outside border will use a bit large on the outside. On the inside, again, I'm going to use that dotted line. And I'm going to use a solid in the middle and the top and the bottom. That's already correct. Okay, very good. I like that. That looks very good. And then so here's going to be our item types. We're going to select. This is going to be a data validation here called item types. So we're going to use a list on here and we're going to call it equals item types. Okay, very good. So we can basically we select finished goods or raw goods. As we make this selection, we want those uh, details to load down here. All right, I like that. That's gonna look really good. It's looking quite nice. And I also wanna have a clear filter button here. We're gonna search by name. So if you search by, let's say flower under raw goods, all the different types of flowers will load down here. So I like that. I'm going to skip a column, J, and then here I'm going to add something else. I want BOM assembly items. So BOM assembly items. So they're all gonna go here and there's gonna be individual columns. The first column is gonna be the name. Then I want the item type. Then I want the purchase quantity. After the purchase quantity, I want the unit of measure, we'll abbreviate it, UOM. Purchase unit, what is the unit, such as each or a bag or box? What type is it? Is What item type is it? And I wanna know the purchase cost, and I wanna know the total cost. All right, that's very good, I like that. Double check everything. Okay, I'm gonna add one more. So the purchase quantity is gonna be how much we've purchased in the past, or how much, what's our normal purchase. And the, the quantity field is going to be the quantity that we're going to be adding. How many get added to this? For example, I want to know how many we normally purchase of this. But let's go ahead and give it a, a little bit of a nice color. I'm going to right click on here, giving it that nice color. We can merge and center it for actually. If we copy it first and then we paste it in, then we merge and center, it's going to take on that formatting automatically. So now if I merge and center that here, it's already taken on. Perfect. Now I'm going to give the one under it a little bit of a a color bolding those titles giving it the borders all the way around and then also the format on that i want to make sure that it's going to be a, a, a similar format so the fill is going to take on that secondary fill color so we can do a fill effects and we're going to take that secondary color that we've been using here and then we'll go to the lighter color so that's also going to take on that perfect okay i like it make sure we bold that font borders all the way around on here all right things are looking good we've got everything the way we want it set up as far as the headers now our data is going to go in here quantity is going to go in here okay it looks really good what else do we want to have now that we have our size what we can do is merge and center that here all the way over here so they can center i'm going to give it that same theme color here all right so we can add that's time to add our buttons and our logos and things like that we can insert a picture here i'll click a picture i've got one already set up a logo for this and i'll get this right here and we're going to insert that okay Bring it on down here and we've got a nice logo i had mid journey make this logo for me and now let's go ahead and insert our button so again insert this time we're focused on shapes and we'll start out with the square shapes these these buttons up the top we're going to be using for i will do add new bom we'll give it a color i want to i want to right justify that so we can save room for the icon in the middle and i want to give it a fill that's consistent with our theme which is right about this color right here okay so now i like that and then now uh, let's capitalize that so it makes it look better we can see the font better and then i think i want to go with the add new bom okay, so let's give it that dark same dark theme that we've been using which is the darkest one here what we want to do is do all of our buttons then we're going to do the icons within it so i'm going to use Control d we're going to duplicate that and that's going to be for 
our saver update button i'm going to duplicate that one more and that's going to be for our delete so this one's going to be called save or update save or update and then we have another one called delete bon okay so now that we have the three buttons set up i also want a button a background for the picture so i'm going to duplicate that and then i'm going to just basically clear this is going to be for we need one for our button here for our adding the picture and we can set the height of 0.2 and then another 0.2 that's going to be for our folder. I'm going to place that right about here inside. We'll put a folder icon on top of that, a folder with pictures, so we can add a picture onto that. And then I also want to need one for the clear filter. So I'm going to duplicate that, and I put that right about like here. We're going to use that for the clear filter. So I want one more. So we're going to insert, and then I want to insert a triangle here. And the triangle is going to be basically used for adding an item. So I'm going to select here, and we'll just place it right about here and up here and like that okay so we're just going to call this add very very simple here add add okay and then I, what i want to do is i want to basically go in and just remove any anything around the text so there's no no spacing here so we're going to go into the text options here and then just you know any kind of margins that are here we'll just remove them we don't need them and then i want to make sure it's automatically centered on here giving it that exact color that we want and then we want to make this basically the same height as the individual cells and we'll give it a little bit of a 3d effect so inside the shape format shape effects and we'll do the bevel and then this bevel here okay i like that so it is this one that's going to be letting us know exactly where we want to add the items okay very good i need one more for the delete item so i'm going to use Control d if i have an item here and i want to remove it i need to delete it so this one's going to be for our delete item so we're going to add we have a filter button so this will clear the filter and this is going to be for the folder okay now we're ready to add the icon so i'm going to insert pictures here this device and we're going to select on the icon so i'm going to add the add new we want that clear filter we want that confirm we need that we also need the folder picture for that we're going to need a home on that and uh print order that we already have this let's say we need this for the remove it delete and uh that looks good okay so we're going to insert those we're going to make them all point to size point two just to be a little bit easier now we're ready to place so this one's going to go for the save and update this one i'm going to use twice i'm using this for the delete i'm going to duplicate that and I also need it for the delete item here, but I want to make it a little bit smaller. So deleting individual I icons, deleting individual items is also very important. I'm going to zoom in on that and make sure it's centered. All right, I like that. I'm going to use the selection tool around. I'm going to center it both vertically and horizontally and group it. And I'm going to give it a, a name called deal delete item okay i like that okay very good now this one's going to be for the picture while we're zoomed in let's add the picture up here make that a little bit small again 0.18 because these are small buttons we're just going to be using for the add pictures again doing the same thing the repetition helps grouping them oops grouping them together here and then making sure so that's why it's important to have these tools in the quick and then grouping because you can use a lot of them quickly okay the filter we're going to do the same thing here again making it smaller we'll do this one 0.16 and uh, removing it bringing it down here using the selection tool centering both of them grouping them okay i like that that's looking really good so we're going to call this the add item button so this we're going to give it a name called add item because we need to place these so we've got name and then the home is going to go for our home in fact i don't need that i'm just going to duplicate one that i already have on another one so the dashboard let's see the um purchase orders i've already have one here i just want to duplicate that that's going to send us to the home and we're going to put that here on the upper left side so we can zoom out a little bit i'm going to place it right about here so i'm putting it there okay so that's just going to get us to our main screen here all right so things are looking really good these two this will be placed as we make a selection it will be placed same with this one as we make a selection this is going to place so we don't have to worry about that our new one we need to add one more add new one here let's bring that icon up we're going to center that group it here we don't necessarily need to name those just yet if at all and then the same thing for the delete we can shrink this button we're getting our screen it's looking pretty good in no time at all and grouping that now that we have the three buttons group we want to make sure that we're grouping each one individually and that's going to help us line things up when we also group all of them together so the reason we want to do that is we want to space them accordingly line them up space them horizontally here and then grouping them all together once we do group them all together we also want to make sure that they are uh, not sizing but moving so we're going to go into the properties here and we're going to make sure they move but don't size with cells
And we should pretty much do that with any single button or icon. We certainly don't want to do that. So we can select them all just in case we change it and make sure it's move but don't size. Okay, very good. We're set up with that. We can bring this over here and we'll close it out for now. We'll be using it in a moment though. Continuing on, so what do we want to do now? Now that we have our button set up, let's do some conditional formatting. We've got conditional formatting here, here, and here we wanna add. So we'll start out with just here. We're gonna use three different rules. Uh, one for the odd, one for the even, and one for the selected. So we can select a cell here and then go into the manage rules and we see that there's no cells. We're gonna add a new one. We're gonna use a formula. It's gonna be equal. It's gonna be two conditions. So therefore we're gonna use and. The first condition is gonna be D5 must not be empty, but it's not just five, it's any row below that. So we'll remove the dollar sign and then it's gonna be for even rows. So we're gonna do the mod of row two equals zero. And for these, I wanna give it a format. We're gonna use two blue colors. So we'll do uh, a fill effects here and then we'll do just a, actually a fill color, one single fill color. The reason we're using fill effects is because I want to locate these colors here that's going to so the even is going to go to this light clicking okay I want also want to do a border I'm going to do a left bottom uh, left and bottom border and right so probably a dotted line give it a little bit nicer look so we'll do the dotted line on the left the bottom and the right clicking okay now I want to copy this rule because the next one is going to be very similar we're going to do okay we're going to add a brand new rule you can use a formula and we're going to paste but this time we're using odd rows so in this case i want to use one and we can use the existing background color that's okay so that means we don't need to format the background the fill but just the border in itself and so we use the same color and also the same dotted lines on the left the bottom and the right clicking OK and click OK. Also, what I want to do is add a new rule for the selected row, and I want to make sure that that's on top, therefore I'm saving it for last. This, our selected product is going to be based on B2. B2 equals the row. That's going to be our selected product row. I want to give that a very unique color. And the color that I want to do is going to be based on our theme. So we're going to use the fill effects here. We're going to use the this medium to dark color, but I want to make sure that the font also is also bold and white. So we're going to select bold and white for the font clicking okay that's what i want to do okay clicking okay and okay okay so that's what i want to do now we need to do the applies to so we can go back into conditional formatting and i want this to applies to where so basically i can select the applies to here and i want to apply d through e all the way down to a large row so 999 and we can just copy and paste this and apply it down to each one of the ones that we've created and click apply okay very good so now as we color rows here as we add information we can see the colors Oops, i need to update the format to these actually this one i'm going to give it a uh, color this one's the same as background so we'll do darker on this one i think that's fine format that and then we'll do the fill fill effects and we'll do a little bit darker color so we'll do this color right here okay i like that the way that that looks and click okay and okay all right, very good. So now we've got that applied here. We can see the darker colors. All right, a little bit too dark. I just updated it to a little bit lighter. Okay, so it's a nice alternating row. So we, as we have data, it's going to automatically color in. Perfect. Now what we want to do is we want something very, very similar for the others. So all we need to do is just copy this. We're going to paste it right here, and then we can update the conditional formatting. So conditional formatting and manage rules. Now our selected, this kind of, this is going to be a selected item row, but this is not going to be B2. So we're going to edit our selected item row is B9, B9. So we already set that up. So we're going to change that to B9, clicking OK. Now what we want to do is we want to have, it's going to be G13. So we're going to edit this. It's going to be G13. It's going to be our first row. Clicking OK. And here, editing row, this is also going to be G, not D. So clicking OK. Now the applies to is going to be different, of course. The applies to is going to be here all the way down to, let's say, a large row, 999. I'm going to copy that and we're going to paste it here and here. The quantity is going to be user entered. So I want that to be in white for any values where there's a, a value in row G. So we're going to add a new rule. Use a formula for that. And what is it going to be? It's going to be if G and any row associated starting at 13 does not equal empty. So for that, what am I going to do? I'm going to give it a format. I want it white. So we're going to use the border. I'm going to use our color here to wrap all the way around solid border. And the fill is going to be white. It's clicking OK clicking OK. We'll apply all that, clicking OK. So I want to make sure that applies to G. So we'll go back in the condition format. It has to apply to column H. That's the quantity field. So H and all the way down here to, let's see, a large row, 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Okay. 
apply that. Okay, perfect. So basically, as we enter data, we want to make sure that we can enter automatically everything. So you see how they can then enter the quantity when there's items. And that's exactly what I want. So the only question was, does the selected row, which one takes precedence, the selected row or white? And I would say we go on the selected row. So to do that, meaning the selected row takes precedence, we move it up, click apply. So now, regardless, it is going to put in there so now they can enter whatever they want and it's going to show up in that so they know which one selected all right i like the way that that is looking so we want to add some conditional formatting here so i'm going to again control c and then control v paste it in and we're going to update the conditional formatting it's easier to copy and paste so we can show the selected row is going to be based on b10 so we're going to edit that and we're going to change this to b10 that's for the selected item row clicking ok and of course we want to apply this to what i want to apply this to all the fields within all the way through s and all the way down to a large row 9999 okay what else do we do so i want to copy the applies to paste it here and paste it here but this time it's going to be based on information in column k so we're going to edit the rule this is not column g it's column k and also the same one for the other one so for the even row we're also going to do it here column k and that is as we add data it's automatically going to be selected okay clicking applies to and clicking okay now as we add data here here we can see that we have the nice alternating rows within the same consistent theme if we add a, a selected row it's automatically going to select perfect okay that's what i want i'm going to left justify this here and things are looking up just about ready to start working on the macros right so we've got some really cool things and i'll go very slowly on these macros so we can understand everything that's going on here inside here this column i'm going to put the type the type and i'll show you what that's going to mean once we get some data in here we'll be able to show you how to calculate these things based on the type in other words this is going to be finished goods or other costs or raw goods and it's going to be a type it's going to be hidden though in here all right we'll show you how that's going to work what else do we need to do well the first thing what i'd like is to have a finished product all the finished products and the on hand quantities i want to have in here i want to have in this list so i need a macro that's going to do that for me and every time we save existing bom i want this list to update remember bom or finished product they're all the same they're just whatever you want to call them there are completed products that we have so how do we do that to happen what we want to do first is clear this out so now what we're ready to do is the macros into our vba editor and start writing some macros now i've got some written already that's going to help us move things along because it's already a long training and that's gonna help us but i'll walk you through every step inside the developers we're going to go into visual basic alt f11 is a shortcut key there and what we want to happen is i've got some macros here this is our sample i've got two workbooks open and we've got some modules here so we're going to go into the bom sheet mop macros these are the ones that are going to list for the sheet we have a clear filter one for the clear filter button that's going to clear everything out and we've got ones but the first one i want to focus on is adding items to a list adding these finished products lists so when do we want that to happen that is particular one is going to be located in our bom record macro and it's called finished product list finished product list and basically what we want to do is I want to clear out everything here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go inside our products we have something called finished goods finished goods is the same as a product I want to load in some information here I want to have the finished product and I also want to have the quantity on hand I also want to load the product ID the product ID is very important but I don't really want to see the product ID so what we can do is we can load the product ID in this column and we'll just hide it then the product name then the on hand quantity and then when I select on a product, I want whatever product ID is located in column C, I want to place it directly inside B3. So let's take a look at that. This macro here called finished product list. The first thing we want to do is clear out inside the BOM assembly. That's this sheet here. The sheet's called BOM assembly. If you're not sure what the sheet names are, it's called here BOM assembly. Now to, to change that sheet, we just go into the properties here and we can change it from right here. So this is the code name. And this here is the finished name that you see on the sheet name. So there's two names for the sheet. So this one's called the code name. We can use it right here. We're going to clear out B2. That is the selected product row and we're going to clear out all the way from c5 through e. c5 is a hidden it's going to be hidden c5 all the way through e and on down so that's the first thing what we're going to do then what i want to do is i want to delete any criteria now this is important because 
except I spelled it wrong. I want to delete criteria because in this particular advanced filter, we're going to run an advanced filter. It means I want all these products, all these finished goods here, the name, the product, and of course the on hand. And I want to bring them over to another part of this sheet. So this here, and I'm going to bring them over to right here called BOM product list, the product ID, the name, and the on hand. And I want them to appear here, but there's no criteria, meaning I want to list all the products without any kind of a criteria or filter. And then we can alphabetize them if we want to here. And then also we can bring them over into the sheet. So that's exactly what we're going to do inside this macro. But first we need to determine the last row of the sheet. The last row is 17. So we need to determine that that's a long variable. If it's less than four, that means we have no data and we can exit the sub. We're going to run that advanced filter with no criteria. See how this is blank in here? There's two commas, there's no criteria. So we want to make sure that if there's any criteria on the sheet, we're deleting it first. And if there isn't, it's going to create an error. So we've wrapped it in on air resume next and on air go to zero. We've trapped that error in case it happens. So I'm going to go all the way to column K because our quantity on hand, we need that information. And I want those results to appear directly inside Y2 through Y3, Y2 through AA, excuse me, AA2. Bringing that all the way over here. So Y2 through AA2. We're going to determine once the results get here, I need to know the last row. If it's 17, I need to put that in a variable. Last results row equals Y end up with this is if it's less than three, that means we have no data. And then now I want to sort them alphabetically. Sort them alphabetically using uh, A, Z here, uh, column Z, we're sorting them alphabetically. Z3 is our column here. When we sort on ascending alphabetically, the range that we're sorting, Y3 all the way to the last row, and then we're going to apply. So this here will sort it alphabetically. Once they're sorted, what I want to do is I want to bring over the product list into our, into our BO assembly sheet, into the BO assembly, range C5 through E and the last row plus two. Our starting row is C5. Our starting row here is three. So that's why we need to add three because we're bringing it into starting in row five. So we're going to bring that in. Once we bring it in, what I want to do is I want to look inside here. If there's a value inside B3 and the product ID, let's say product ID one is, is right here in C5. And I know it's found on row five. I want to take this B2 and I want to put five here like this because I want that selected row to show up for whatever product has been selected. So that's what we're going to do. If B3 does not equal empty, that means we have a selected product ID. I want to automatically mark that product here. Whatever product is showing, in other words, whatever product is showing here, it's going to be the ID is going to show up here. And I want to automatically select that. It means highlight the line by putting the row in here. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to update B2 with whatever found ID. So B2 is equal BOM assembly. We're looking inside C5. We're looking in column. I'm looking. What am I looking for? I'm looking for whatever's in B3. I'm looking for that product ID. If it's found, I'm going to extract the row that it's found on. And where am I going to put that row? I'm going to put it directly in B2. So when I run this macro here, that's exactly what's going to happen. So you see one was found. It looked in here. It, it, it looked for this B3. It found it. It found it on row five and it see, row six and it placed it directly that row right here. So that's how it's found. So it's found it on that row and it put the row that it found it on in B2. So that's how we have it. But I, I don't really want to see these numbers. I really don't want I I want to hide them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, go into the home and I'm going to change the format. And I'm going to do this a few times. And I'm going to change it to two semicolons or three semicolons. If there's any text or letters, we would need three semicolons. It's going to be a custom format, but we can use two in this case. Two semicolons, clicking OK. Now they're still there, but they're hidden. So notice, however, if they're hidden, we need to make sure that we're going to be looking for them. If they're hidden, I need to use XL formulas. They're hidden right now. If they're not hidden, I can use XL values. So sometimes when you're looking for something using the find and you can't find it, it's because maybe they're hidden. So XL formulas will even find it if it's hidden. XL values will not. All right, great. So that's a little tidbit there. So basically, now what I want to do is I want to load in. When I make a change here into raw goods, I want to load all of the raw goods. If there's any, if we're searching by something, only want to list what we're searching by. However, if it's blank, we don't want to search. In other words, we want all the all of the values if we're, there's no filter. If we're searching by name, we can filter by that name. So we're going to look in the raw goods. Now, the raw goods are all on this sheet here. So these are all of our raw goods.
Now, the best way to do that is we need to run a filter. So how do we do that? We can use some criteria. Now that criteria is gonna be directly based on this. So it's gonna be based on cell H11. If H11 is empty, there's no criteria. If H11 has a value, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the wildcard asterisk before and after it in the criteria. Here's what I mean by that. Selecting all the way over here. Here it is, name. Here's that criteria right here that we're talking about. If the BOM assemblies H11 equal empty, then just put two asterisks. Otherwise, or one would be fine. Otherwise, put whatever they have in here, whatever's in H11, and surround it by put an asterisk before that wildcard and after. And that means if the what they're searching for is contained, then return it. Then the return's gonna be, then I want the results to appear right here. So I want the goods ID, the name, I want to leave one blank for that's why is it blank because the quantity this is where you're going to use it into the quantity i want the unit of measure unit of measure and i want the picture name well you're, you're telling me well randy i only saw three columns name quantity and unit of measure right how come you have four columns N item quantity unit of measure well what about the first column and what about the last column well those are there they're just going to be hidden so let's do that right now let's run the macro it's going to run on h10 so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside here we're going to go into the BOM assembly, this sheet right here, and I've commented everything out, you can see here. And that's going to be on worksheet change. So we're just going to update it once at a time. So worksheet change event is here. What are we changing? We're going to be changing any change to H10. So that is what we're going to focus on. H11, of course, if we're searching by name, we need, we also, as soon as we put something in, we also want that search to run. So any change to the item or any change to uh, the, the search filter, we want to run that macro. So any change, so let's comment that out. So I'm gonna go here and just uncomment and even um, option explicit, I'm gonna uncomment that out. So now, when we make any change to H10 or other one, what do we want to happen? We wanna run a macro called BOM list items to add, BOM list items to add, and that's on the BOM sheet macros called BOM list items to add. We also have another one called clear filter in which all we're doing is clearing the contents. Now this clear filter, we can actually just assign it. Since it's the first macro, I'm gonna copy that. Since we got a lot of macros, I'm gonna take this group button here. This is our clear filter. I'm gonna assign the macro. I'm gonna paste that directly in here. And the reason we've got two is we got two workbooks open. So clear filter, clicking okay. So that's gonna clear the filter. Okay, so this is the macro that we're going to run. So it means any change on H11, it's gonna also run the macro. So that means we don't need to run this macro when we make a change because the change event here will automatically trigger this. Just to go over that again here inside the BOM assembly here, any change to H10 will automatically run this macro, even clearing the contents out. So that's how we got that. So we're gonna set the list type as a string. I wanna know with the BOM assembly, the list type is gonna be H10. Because we have two, we have three different list types. We have raw goods, we have finished goods, and we have other costs. Now other costs are in another list called other, or I don't know, God, this is so massive. Look at this. Other costs are here. My other costs are cost ID, name, a description, material cost. So we want to list those other costs in here. So that comes from there. So basically I need to know what sheet, what sheet are we getting? Is it other costs? We're going to admit, look, this is the same formula, but it's a different sheet. The results are going to come in here. So that's for other costs. We have another one for finished goods. Look at this, same one for finished goods, same formula, same results for BOMs, but this is finished goods. And lastly, we have raw goods, raw goods here. Again, same formula, same results, but different sheet, but we have the same idea. So I just wanted to get you, uh, help you understand that. All right, so that's why it's so important to understand what type of list. Is it raw goods? Is it finished goods? Or is it other costs? If the list type is empty, we can exit the sub out. First thing I wanna do is I wanna clear the existing fields. Inside the BO assembly, I wanna make sure that we're clearing out all the way from F, all the way through J and down. So that's very important. So all the way from F to J. And I also wanna know the selected row, B9, whatever row is selected, I wanna clear that out too. So we need to do that. Now, if there's an item picture, remember we have a, when we select in our sample, there's an item picture that shows up. I wanna make sure we clear out that. That name is gonna be called item picture. So we need to clear that out. When we make a selection on an item, that picture will appear. So what we wanna do is clear that out, if it, or delete it, right? Then what we wanna do is I wanna hide the add item button. This button here, this is called 
add item button. So add item, make sure I got the name right. I want to make sure it's exactly right. Add item. Okay, perfect. I want to hide that. We don't want to delete it. We just want to hide it. We only want this button to appear when we make a selection change, then we want to add it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to check to make sure that that's hidden. Next up, if we've, it's already hidden, so now we need to determine which list are we filtering. Is it raw goods? Is it finished goods? Or is it other costs? So we're going to use select case for that based on the list type. If the case is raw goods, we're going to focus on that raw goods sheet. We want to determine the last row. If it's less than four, we're going to exit the sub. We want to run an advanced filter based on those raw goods. So here is our raw goods sheet. We want an advanced filter here, all the data. Then I want to have the criteria is going to be P2 through B3, and I want the results to come in R through V. So that's what we have right here. P2 through P, R2 through V2. That's where the results are going to come. We're going to determine the last row based on column R. If it's less than three, there's no values. We can exit the sub. We're going to take whatever results F3 through J, last results plus 10. Remember, our first row of results is 13. Our first row of results here is three, so we need to add 10 onto this. So that's just gonna be bringing over the goods. Now, it's almost the same with the finished goods. Again, we're determining the last row, we're running an advanced filter on the finished goods here, almost the same type of, almost the same rows, P2 through P3, same columns, R2 through V, same columns I've used, consistency helps. I'm gonna check the last row and then bringing over the finished good data. Now, other costs, also the same. If we look in other costs, again, we have P2 through P3, same, helps for coding, we use the same columns. The results are through you. This time there's no picture, there's no picture for other costs, although we could eventually add a picture. You could easily add a picture of another cost and then add that picture here too. Keeping that column blank, here's one thing I wanna to bring to your attention. When the results have a blank column, your original data must have a blank column, must. So that means when our advanced filter must go to column G in this case, so let's take a look. Must go to column G, our advanced filter must go to include a blank column because our results include a blank column. Our results include a blank column because it's easy to bring all the data over in one motion, one line of code, because our results have a blank column. So if our results have a blank column, it's easy to bring it over. Okay, so now that we have that, we know what we're doing. We're gonna bring all that information, that's for other costs, doing everything else. And then also I wanna sort the list. So now I'm gonna sort it. I wanna sort it based on the item name. So whether it's finished good, whether it is a raw good, or whether in other costs, I wanna sort by name. But we wanna make sure to include in the sort those hidden. These are gonna be hidden. And this is gonna, the picture name is gonna be hidden all the way from F through J. So we're gonna do a sort based on that. We're gonna clear all the sort fields out. And then what I wanna do is make sure that we are going to Add a key, it's gonna be based on G13, that is the first item here, and it's gonna be based on name. We also want it ascending, A to Z, and then I wanna sort the range F all the way through J. We're sorting, setting that range, and then applying that sort. Great, so that's gonna happen when we make a change to items. So if I were to change it, if I double click this just there alone, it's gonna automatically add that, because flower is the only one we had. So if we clear that filter, it's gonna load all of them up. Okay, very good. I like the way that looks. We're going to look. We've got some additional conditional formatting here we do not need. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. In fact, I want to make sure that there's no rules that we have. It doesn't look like. And I'm going to go into the conditional formatting. I'm going to manage rules because there's some inconsistencies. Sometimes when we copy and paste, we easily get, it looks like we've got some duplicates, which we don't need. And so we can just remove those. Let's take a look at, uh, oh, let's make sure we select on only the columns. I want to make sure I don't want to select on column K because that's for a different type of conditional formatting. Okay, it looks good. I'll just double check the applies to to make sure we're all on the same page. All right, it looks good. No additional ones. We can just color those cells to make sure that they're colored the same as our background color, which is this color here. Okay, it's looking pretty good, but what I want to do is I want to hide these I want to hide these. Let's uh, bring this down a little bit so that it's consistent with the rest of the rows just here. And I'd like to hide those columns. I don't want to see the item ID. I know that they're there, but I don't want to see them. So how can we do that? We're going to use, again, that same formatting that we've used before. But this one's text. So here I'm going to just hold down this one here. And we can use the same thing. And I'm going to use the control. And I'm going to go all the way up on this one right to about here go into the home remember this is the id this is the picture they're there we just don't want to see them but they're there i'm going to go into the more number formatting and because this contains text also i'm going to use three semicolons on the custom clicking okay 
just remember we know the pictures there if i select on any type of a field we see that the picture apples png okay great so what do we want to happen when i make a selection on here i want a few things to happen one i want the selected row to go directly inside b9 two i want the add item that button to appear and i want the picture to appear below it and that's going to happen on selection change event when i make a selection as long as there's a value inside g so how do we make that happen well that's on selection change event so let's go into our file here we're going to go into the assembly on the sheet and it's going to be a selection change event okay so what kind of selection change event we're going to focus pretty much starting with g through i g through g13 through i so i've already written some code g13 through i so i'm going to comment this out here all the way selecting here and going up here so as i comment that out it of course it'll make it activated which is good that way i can show you one step by step at a time okay uncommenting out so now when we make a selection g13 we want to make sure that f isn't empty right f is critical because that's where our id is located our id is located right here this one's 18 so we want to make sure that f contains a value b9 is also going to take on that target row remember b9 we want that select item row so that's going to trigger that conditional formatting also what we want to do is we want to have remember the item picture i want to delete any item picture that might exist because we want to add a brand new item and also remember that triangle that we had that add item i want that to appear that's already been hidden but i want it to appear and i want it to appear in column j and on the target row so that's where i want it to appear in so focusing on this add item that shape the left position is going to be on j a little bit to the right and then the top position is also on j in the target row and then going to show the value okay great so that's going to do that but i also want to show the picture if it's available so how do we have that picture now i've got the pictures already located in a folder so if we take a look inside this folder pictures they're all here all the pictures are located here so apricots apples apple pie right so they're all here inside this folder so what i want to do is i want to map this so i've taken this folder this entire folder here if we bring it all the way over here we see that entire folder path and i'm going to put that directly inside our admin screen so if we go here and we go back to admin we see that this folder path is here picture so i want to put that that's the item item we only need one item item picture folder okay so that's going to be for all of our items putting that there so if we combine this folder then another backslash plus the name and the name is located inside here inside column j if we combine all that that'll give us a full file path to the picture and we can display it so that's what we're going to do right here add picture if applicable if j and the target value does not equal empty that's where our picture is located and we've created a name range called picture folder so back inside the admin if we select on here we see there's a name range called picture folder so if we combine that named range with the name of the picture we can get a full file path and we're going to call that into a string so we're going to dimension the picture path as a string then that picture path full picture path is based on that picture folder and a backslash and the name which is located inside column j now that we have the full picture path i want to make sure that it is accurate so if the directory of the picture path doesn't equal empty then what we're going to do is we're going to insert that picture and we're going to put the give it a specific name called item picture we do not need a unique name for every different item because we're only going to show one picture at one time okay, with shapes item picture we're going to lock the aspect ratio we're going to set the left position to j and the top row and we're going to set j and the row one down meaning the top position is going to be one row down why because the add item is going to show in the same row so we're going to drop one row down and we're going to show that picture we're going to give it a very specific height of uh 50 or width of 50 that just sets the limits to so it doesn't go too bad too too large okay so that all that happens on selection change of g13 to i99 let's check it out and take a look and see what how it happens if i select on here and we want to see it let's go ahead and activate that and that's on the selection change event so we do have to activate that selection change which is right here and we go down and we have to activate the end sub right here so the, all those are important so that it's actually activated right we can't just activate the inside we actually have to activate the event here selection change so we go back in here we select on something here let's take a look now that's looking pretty good that's exactly what i want so we have the picture we could probably drop that picture down a little bit right so all we do is it's going to set that let's go ahead and set that position the top position for the picture let's add two pixels onto that 
All right, so it's a little bit not right on that. Okay, I like that, that looks really good. So now we have the pictures, and now what we wanna do is we want to get the assembly. I wanna be able to add items to this. When I click here, I want those items added to our BOM assembly. So how are we going to do that? I wanna to look to see if it's already been added. If it has been added, I'm just gonna double up the quantity or however much quantity. But I wanna to check to make sure that the user has entered a quantity. So if we add 20 grams of almonds, I want to make sure that the 20 appears here and we want to check if almonds are already here we're simply going to add 20 to whatever is there already so we're going to check that out how that happen that's going to be on a macro called add item that's a macro that we're going to tie to this so that's going to be in our bom sheet macros we've already covered this the next step is called bom add item so it is this macro if i right click and copy that that we're going to add to our add button so i'm going to sign that macro and then we're going to paste that directly in here clicking ok all right so now we have the macro so what does this macro do we're going to dimension the item database row as long and that's very important because depending upon the item type i need to add more information i need to add the type purchase quantity the unit purchase unit i need to add all this information and that information for example for raw goods is found here on the raw goods sheet so all the the quantity on hand the unit of measure all that's found here so we need to make sure we're going to be adding that too okay so let's get back into it and take a look at that macro and see exactly what's going on and how we can do that okay the first thing what we want to do is i want to clear the selected bom item row i'm going to clear the contents of b10 right i want to make sure that we take any selected row that might be here and clearing that out so b10 gets deleted like that and it clears out that selected row okay to do that i also want to make sure that we have an item right if b9 if there's no no selected item here if b9 doesn't have a number then we don't know what item has been selected so that's very important we want to make sure if b9 is empty then we're going to let the user know to please select uh, an item making sure that we have that if b9 is empty let the user know please select an item to add to the bom we're going to exit the sub out then we're going to assign a variable to that called select an item row that's a long variable that is the selected item rows once i have that i want to then make sure that they've added a quantity if i look inside column h and there's nothing here we need to let the user know to please enter a quantity we have to have a quantity if we are going to be adding that quantity so that's critical so we want to make sure if they have not we're going to let them know with please select an item quantity before adding the item we're going to exit the sub out we're going to turn off application screen updating that'll make things a little bit faster we're going to set the item type is going to be on h10 i want to know that item type located right here inside a variable and that's very important because i need to know which uh, database to look up at the item id is going to be inside hidden to be in column f right? i want to pull whatever column f is that's the item id and then i also want to know the item name that's going to come from column g the quantity is going to come from h and also want to clear the item quantity once i've put that quantity i want to clear it out in other words we're going to clear this out once we have that number inside a long variable so we put that there okay great i think item quantity should probably be double right i think so item quantity is double good double because they might want to enter 1.5 double you know so long is double is better so we did define that as double which is what i want okay so now what we want to do is i want to determine the item row we're going to check if it has already been added so that means if almonds are already here i want to find almonds here and i want to add it so how do we do that what we're going to be doing is we're going to check all the way through column k now what's going to go in column k column k is going to be that item name has is it there or not so i'm going to look inside column k i'm going to look for the item name i'm going to look in the values and i'm going to look so we're using values and not formula because column k is not hidden and i want to extract the row if it does not equal zero that means it's already been found all we need to do is take whatever quantity we have here and add it and we're going to add whatever quantity they're adding so we're simply increasing the quantity by this number because it's already been found so we could do that m and the value equals whatever's there currently plus the item quality we're simply updating the quality however if it's not found i want to add a brand new row not found that bom item row is simply going to be the first available row on column k that first available row then what i want to do is i want to add all the information column k let's drop this down here a little bit column k is going to take on the item name column l is going to take on the type m is going to take on that quantity then t is going to take on the item id i'm going to put 
T right in here. I'm going to put the item ID right in here inside T. So this is, of course, going to be hidden as well inside T. I want to put the item ID. In. All right. So now that is only for new items. So what else do we want to do? I want to use select case. I want to get that information. In other words, regardless of the item type, whether it's a finished good, a raw good, or an other expense, all this information is going to be put in regardless. However, beyond this, it's specific to the item type. Well, what if it's raw goods? We're going to use select case based on that item type. Then what we want to do is I want to find the the database row based on that using the item ID. That item ID is very important here. And that is why we've added it in here. So we need to know that we've already isolated that item ID in that variable here. So I'm going to look up, for example, if it's raw goods, and I know we're looking at raw goods, and I'm adding in almonds, right? It's uh, 42, right? So I need to look up inside our raw goods, and I need to look up 42 in column A, and I need to know that it's in row 45. So I have a named range for raw goods. If we go into the formulas, name manager, and I think it's raw goods ID here. This is the name manager. So I'm going to look in this named range inside the name manager and find what row it's on. So we're going to do that inside this. The item database row is located based on the raw goods sheet. We're looking in the raw goods named range. I'm looking up for the item ID and I want to extract the row. As long as it's found, meaning it's not equal to zero, then what I want to do is I want to take all the purchase quantity, the unit of measure, the purchase unit, the item type, and the purchase cost. I want to take all of those things from this database here in whatever selected row, and I want to place them directly inside our, the information here. And that's going to include the purchase quantity, how much we normally purchase it. That'll go into column N, as in Nancy, I want to take the unit of measure that's going to go inside O, the purchase unit, that's going to go in column P, the item type inside column Q, and the purchase cost inside column R, and then, of course, the total cost, we're going to have that as well. The total cost will be a formula based on that. But that's if only if it's raw goods. If it's finished goods, we're going to do something very similar, but this time I'm going to extract the item database row based on the product ID, we're looking in the item ID, and I'm going to extract the row from the item. Let's do this uh, finished goods row. Make it to finished goods or product. So now that we have that, we're going to extract. And this time, we're going to set the default purchase quantity to 1. Right? We don't know what the average is. We also want to set that's going to be O is going to take the unit of measure. That's going to be nothing. We're just putting that blank because there is no unit of measure for these particular products. Purchase units going to be in P. We're just going to put in each. And then the item type is going to come directly and the purchase cost. Those are going to come from the database. If it's other costs, we're going to do something very simple. This one's called the cost ID. Remember, we're going to extract some information from our other costs here. So if we take a look in here and we have other costs I want to extract here. So we have cost type. We have the unit and the cost. So that information is going to be extracted on that as well. And that's the name range called cost ID. So we're extracting the row, adding all that information in purchase cost, the unit type. So we're extracting columns E, D, and F, columns E, D, and F. And we're bringing them directly inside the BOM assembly here, directly from the database, inside columns P, Q, and R. So P, Q, and R, we're going to take on that information here to add that in. Okay, very good. Okay, and then we turn on application screen updating to true. Perfect. All right, I made one. This was J. I turned it to I. I just made that change because that would be our, for our finished goods. So if we look inside our finished goods, I want to make sure that the item cost I that comes up. That's what not J. J is the profit. Okay, so I just made that quick update. All right, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and take a look back inside the assemblies. We'll add our first item, and we also need a formula for that. So we want to add item, add almonds. We just select here. It's going to add the name, the quantity, the purchase price, and the purchase unit in the grams. We can center these here, and uh, then what we'll do is we're going to add in a formula. Now, what is that formula for total cost? I want to bring that down. Well, first of all, we want to make sure that we have a value in M11. If M, if there's no quantity, we can just show empty. Otherwise, if there's a value, what I want to do is I want to use a form. So if I know that the if we know the purchase quantity is 650, then it's a portion of that. So if it's 23.7, I know it's 10%. So if I change this to 23.7, I know that 
if I know that it's basically 10% of the purchase quantity, so, so, so should the cost be, right? So let's use a formula here and then we can bring down that cost. So equals if M11 equals empty, then show nothing. Otherwise, we're gonna use if error in case there's an error. We're gonna write M11 divided by N11 times R11, times R11. And that's gonna multiply that times that purchase cost. Okay, if there's an error, we're going to show nothing. So we can do comma and then nothing. All right, so let's take a look at that. Perfect, so it's 65. We see that it is exactly 10%, right? So we got that exactly right the way, just the way we want it, 1%, right? 23.7 23 would be 10%, we want it 20. Okay, so that would be 10%, 65 cents. 1%, 2.37, so it depends on the quantity. Perfect, we'll keep it at 23.7. So we see that it's 10% of the cost. We know we're purchasing 237 for 650, uh, so 10% of that would be 65 cents perfect so we've got the total cost based on that and as we change this quantity so does the cost if i change it to 237 if we bought a, if we're using a full bag in the recipe it's going to also change to 650. let's set these costs equal i want to make sure that they're both either currency or formatted here okay i like that that looks pretty good now we're going to save our work now when i make a selection i want to now if i decide to add 10 more i want to make sure that it adds to this so it goes to 247. so if i click add we can see that the quantity changed to 247. and if we want almond extract it's going to add to a brand new row here. Great. Now, when I make a selection change on here, I want something to happen. One, I want that selected row to go to B10, and I want this uh, delete item, I want that to show up. So how I notice that we've had the ID here. We also, of course, want to hide that ID. So how do we do that? Again, home go into the custom formats we see that item id we know it's there so we can hide it go into general and we're going to, since it's only numbers we can use two semicolons and that's going to hide it okay but we know we can select on it we know that the id is there all right so now that we have that when i make a selection change i want something to happen that's going to be on a select and change all the way from k11 all the way through s and down so if we go into our code let's take a look back inside our bom assembly and we've already got that and it's going to be from k11 through s so all i need to do is just uncomment this out and so what do we want to happen if the user makes a selection on k through s and i want to make sure there's a value in k if it's empty we can do nothing if there's a value b10 is going to take on that selected row and with that item delete item that's the item we make sure that we got the name called delete item the shape name is right i want to place that where do i want to place it i want to place it directly on uh, the left position based on column t and the top position and show it to make make sure it's visible Perfect, there we go. But if I select something else, I probably want it hidden. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can go up here and we can hide it. I don't think I added, I did add it up here. Here we go, uncomment that out. So that means no matter what we select, if it's visible, we are going to hide it. So if I select something else, it's hidden. If I select a row, it's displayed. And you see how the row inside B10 also triggers the condition of formatting for the selected row. Okay, very good. That's looking good. We've got one more unfinished product selection. If I make a selection change to here, I want that product to load up. Okay, very good. And also another thing, one of my selection, notice we have the delete. So we've covered the add. Now, why don't we cover the delete? So what I want to do is I want to be able to select this item click this button and delete. So we've got a macro and that's the last macro on that particular module, BOM sheet macro. So we've gone over all the macros on this except for the delete. So let's just review, we've cleared the filter, we've added the items, the list items here. Then we added an item, we just went over that. And now what about removing that item, delete selected item. So this is the macro that's going to be tied to that delete button. So I'm gonna copy that here. And then I'm going to assign it to this button here. So I'm gonna right click, and then we're gonna click assign macro and then we're going to simply paste that in, clicking okay. And so when I select here, I wanna delete it from this list. All right, so how are we going to do that? So basically it's gonna look like this and we can delete it. First of all, I wanna know the selected row. We're gonna set the database row. Another thing is, has this been saved, right? If it's been saved, where would it be saved? It's gonna be saved to another database. 
And that's important because every time we create the finished product that contains assembly items, we need to save that somewhere. So where's it gonna be saved? It's gonna be saved in a table called BOM items. And what are we saving? We're saving the product ID that it's attached to, the name, the item type, and a bunch of information. So there's a row that's attached to this. I need to know if it's been saved or not. I'm going to put that row directly in column U. The item ID is already in column T. So in column U, I'm gonna put that. So what I would look is in column U, has it been saved or not? Notice it hasn't been saved. If I were to save this here, it would automatically be saved. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look in there. First of all, we need a selected row. That's gonna come from B10. That's that selected B OM item, right? I need to know what, what row we're gonna be removing. So it's gonna be, look. Okay, if BOM item row is zero, we can exit the sub. We're gonna look inside column K. If it's empty then, and there's no item, right? We obviously, we have to have an item to remove. If for some reason this is empty, we can exit the sub out. K is required. They get, we're going to set the item type based on L. I need to know the item type. Is it a raw good or whatever type we're adding? Right? If I decide to add another one, let's have a finished good here. Let's add one of those. I don't know why we'd add a baguette. Let's add that, okay? Please select a quantity. Oops, I forgot. To, okay, let's say two blueberry muffins. We're going to add to that and click on add. And so that's going to add blueberry muffins. Now we have the cost. And oh, we need to bring this formula down. So I'm going to take this, copy this. We'll go ahead and copy this formula. And then we'll just go down here. And then we're going to paste those formulas all the way down here and pasting those formulas. Okay, so now that we have the calculator and we've got the, the finished cost. Okay, everything's looking good. So also maybe we're going to add some other costs here. We might want to add some labor or something or marketing or anything like that. So point three to that and we can add that let's select that point three of an hour to add to that so we've got different types right finished goods raw goods other costs all associated with that BOM okay so if we're gonna be deleting something I need to know where are we can deleting what type are we deleting it from so back inside that so we're gonna de determine the item type based on column L the last row if I'm I need to know the last row column K because if I delete this one I need to move the rest of these items up one level so that's very important so to determine the last row it has the database already been saved now remember I told you we we're going to put the data once it gets saved to this uh BOM's items I wanted the database row whatever row it's been saved on I want to put that directly inside column U. So that's important. And to do that, we are going to save it here. So I'm going to look in U. If it's been saved already, I need to delete it from the database. I need to delete it from this. If it hasn't been saved, then we don't need to worry about that. So we're going to check on that right now. If U does not equal empty, it has been saved. There's already a row. It's been saved. So the database row equals whatever's in you, and we're going to delete it directly from the BOM's database. We're deleting that entire row. That is this particular table right here, BOM, BOM items right here. So we want to delete it there. Okay, however, we can continue on now. K, right, I want to clear the content. So basically now what I want to do is I just want to remove it. So I'm going to clear all the contents. We're gonna start all the way in J, because J contains data here, and go all the way to U, and we're gonna clear all of those contents here. So K through R, we're gonna clear all the selected raw item details. Now, why are we going through R? I'm going through R because there's a formula, and I don't wanna upset the formula on S. So we're gonna do K, sorry, there's nothing here. Nothing in this one. Oh, the item picture's here, so sorry. We don't wanna clear K, J, just K, and then we also wanna avoid clearing column S, but we also wanna clear T and U. So those are the important ones. So we're doing a two, seven, K through R, and then T through U, clear this hidden ID and the hidden database row. Those are gonna be cleared as well. Now we're gonna determine if the last row equals the BM, BOM item row. In other words, if I'm deleting this one, there's nothing left to do. We can just delete it and move on. However, if I'm deleting this row, I need to take these rows and I need to move them up a little bit. So if the last row equals the item row, then we can just exit the sub. So if it's not what we're going to be doing is I'm gonna bring up all the values. So K through R minus one equals K through BOM item row plus one through R. What does that, what does all that mean? We're moving the values up. So basically, let's say we clear this row out here. I'm going to take the, the selected row plus one all the way to the last row. We're gonna copy those, kind of like copy value to value and bringing them up row to the selected row all the way to the last row minus one, which is this. So basically we're doing a value to value exchange from these and bringing them up one row. So that's all that does. And we just need to do it twice. So we're gonna do T through K through R and then T through U. 
Then I also want to clear the last row, right? Once I've brought, once I've brought uh, these two last up here, we want to clear the last row. So we're just going to clear because this would be a duplicate. So we're clearing out the last row. So that's going to clear the last row in the hidden database, K through R and then T through U. If the item database row equals last row, what does this mean? If the item row equals a BMO item row to the last row. I want to update the database, right? So that means if I've got a selected row here, I want to make sure we're going to update what's on you. I want to update the database. If these are saved in database five, let's say this is database seven and nine and 10, right? I need to change this from nine to eight and this from uh, 10 to nine. So we need to update these by reducing these one left because they're after that. So I'll show you, it'll be a little bit easier once we get some data in here. And I'll show you that walk you through that. But basically, we just need to reduce these database rows by one. That's very important because, so for example, if I'm deleting this one here, and I know that these three items are on associated rows 27, 28, and 29, and 30, I need to change this to 26, 27, 28, right? Because when we delete one row, everything moves up and run. Now these are basically using a formula. So inside the database, they will update automatically these rows but on here i need to also update them here so we're just basically reducing the database row by one whatever the value is in you here reduce the current value by one that's all we're doing in here okay so when i delete one so if i delete the site i'm going to delete let's say almond extract and i click here it's going to basically bring everything up see how that works okay very good so that's the delete we can do it one more time and we delete it all right i like that that's the way it looks that's how we delete the row okay next up let's take a look inside now we just finished off inside let's close this up here inside the bom sheet macros that was the last macro we're going to go into the bom record macros now the record macros are basically new save add new uh update the product list finish product list here and also the bom save and update the load and the delete so that's all these records so save and update load new so the add new we need to assign this so if we i select on here holding down the control that's going to be bom add new so i'm going to right click assign the macro to that we're going to go bom and then add new here this one's going to be save and update so i'm going to hold down the control clicking and is quicker bom save update right here lastly i want to run the delete holding down the control and we also need to add a picture bom delete here right here we also have need to add a picture here right so we're going to right click here assign the macro and that's going to be bom add picture browse for picture click right here okay very good so those are all the macros that we need to assign i'm going to save our work and we'll go through it one by one okay so we're going to go up here first one is add new so we've got a bunch of variables that we will go over as we come through that Adding is relatively simple. All we need to do is just clear out a bunch of fields. And then what we want to do is if there's a product picture, there might be a product picture, we're going to get right in here. We want to delete that if it exists. And also an item picture. We want to delete any item. If there's an item picture here, right, I want to delete any item picture that might show up. Other costs don't have any pictures, but raw goods and finished goods have pictures here. So, and let's just double check to make sure finished goods show up the picture here. Okay, so I like that. So this is always gonna be called item picture. So when we click add new, we wanna make sure that everything gets removed as it just did. Okay, and also I wanna clear out the selected row here. Okay, so that's add new, so that's relatively simple. Now, finished product list, we went over that. That's this list that we automatically got populated. So we already went over that. That got populated. We understand how that got populated. Okay, very good. So now we want saver update. How do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and add in some information here so that we can save or update. In fact, I can take an existing one. Let's go over the load. What that's going to do is if I activate this, when I make a selection, it's going to load information here. Once it's loaded in, I can then show you how to save and update. So what's going to happen on load when user makes a selection on D through E and assuming that there's a value on D, then I want to do a few things. One, I want to take that target row and I want to put it directly in B2. Another one is that ID that's here that's hidden. I want to put that in B3. And the third thing is I want to run a macro called load, the BOM load, that's going to automatically load the details and put them directly in here. And that's going to all start out with selection change. So we're going to make sure that selection change event right on BOM assembly. And that's the last thing on finished product selection. So that's the last thing we need to uncomment out. And if the user makes a selection on D5, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing three things, D5 through E. We want to make sure that C, that's going to be where our 
product ID is located. We want to make sure that's not empty. We're going to take whatever that row and put it in B2. That'll trigger the conditional formatting. B3 is going to take on that product ID. That's the hidden product ID located in column C. And lastly, running the macro called BOM load. That's the macro that we're going to go over right now. So that means now that I've uncommented out, it's going to go ahead and load that up and it's going to load all the items. So now we can do that. Okay, so now that it's loaded up, we can go in order. I can go, now I can save it. Now we have data in here as opposed to me just entering it. I can actually show how we actually save it on save and update. First thing we need to do when we save an update, we need to know, is it a new one? If it's a new one, we see that product row is going to be empty in B4. If it's an existing one, we know that there's a row that's associated with that. So B4 is going to tell us. So the next macro in our list right here is called that save or update, save or update. So first thing I want to make sure is that we have a name. If H4 is empty, H4 is right here, that means there's no name associated and we would need to make sure that we have a name associated with that. Let the user know that a name is required and then we can exit the sub. Okay, again, as I mentioned, is B4 empty or not? If B4 is empty, we know it's a new product. We need to get the new product row. All of our finished products are going to be saved here under finished goods right in here that new row would come right in here inside 18. what i want to do is i want to add a brand new id to that so that's new one where's that id going to come from it's going to come from right directly here that next product id we use using the max formula so that's where it would come from so we're going to set the, determine the first available row we're going to set the next product id first thing i'm going to do is take that next product ID and put it directly inside b3 okay once i have it there then we're going to set a and the first column that's also going to take on that product id and an existing product if we have an existing product i want to make sure that all we need to do is extract the product row directly from b4 then regardless if it is new or existing we're going to use data mapping from columns 2 to 10 and basically what that means if you haven't seen my videos all we are going to be doing is taking the items here let's take a look inside under finished goods here and we have that here so i've got some data mapping h4 is the finished product name product type is in l4 sales description is in h5 h6 and so on and so forth so basically when i want to save information all i need to do is look in h4 and put it to the new row or existing row l4 so that's data mapping so it's going to go all the way from column 2 to column 10 which is the item profit column 11 is a formula so we don't want to upset that on the quantity on hand so we'll get to that in a bit okay great all the way from 2 to 10 updating all the information so the finished goods the product row in the column are going to take on whatever's inside this range here that range is found in row one in the product column based on our bom assembly sheet so it's going to save data to the database okay so what about the items so now we've saved all the main information inside our bom assemblies we've saved all this information up here but what about all the items associated how do we save those okay this one has a lot of items so let's take a look so now we see we've got those databases these have already been hidden we've already hidden those but i've got the database rows so 14 15 16 these are the rows that are associated flour sugar etc inside the bom items 14 flour sugar 16 cocoa powder so these are all the database rows that we've saved here so we also want to hide that but they're going to be existing as i mentioned if we delete it we need to look to row 15 which is in you and delete that and we can hide this column as well so going into the home again custom more number formats using two semicolons in a custom and that's going to hide it so two semicolons clicking okay all right so we have that it's now hidden we know the database are there so we want to make sure to save our items so for saving our items i'm going to look all the way to the last row i'm just going to i'm going to go back for one second but i'm just going to go back to general and then what i want to do is i want to because i want to show you something i'm going to add let's say we added some more let's say let's say i want to add some other cost to this let's say i want to add some marketing and 0.25 to marketing okay and click add so we've added some marketing now if you see there's no database row that's associated so what i want to do is i want to go from the first to the last row determine the last row then i'm going to look here if it's been saved i'm going to take whatever is in here and i'm going to update row 14. if it hasn't been saved yet there's no i'm going to assign a brand new row and then save all this information as soon as i hit save update it's going to do just that it's going to assign that new row 31 and that's where it's going to be signed so that all that information got assigned to that brand new row on 31. 
So that's going to be save and update. So that's how we do. So we're going to determine the last row. I need to know the last row. In this case, it's 22 so that we can loop through the rows. If it's less than 11, there's no items. For item 11 to the last row. So we're looping from 11 all the way through 22. We're going to check to see if first thing is, has it been saved? You will tell us that. If you equals empty, then it's not yet saved. So we need to do a few things just for those new items. Determine the first row. And I also want to set that item row in column U. I want to take that row and I want to put it right here in column U. So that's important. Inside the database, column A is going to take on that product ID. So we're looking, at, that's only for new items. So inside the, the finished goods here, let's say the beyond item, sorry. Inside, I want to put that product ID directly inside here. So we know the product ID in column A. I also want to do the, the item ID and I also want to do uh, the database row. So these are the three things that we're going to do, but only for new items. So that's what we're going to do in the next line of codes. L is going to take on the database form. Actually, the product ID could change in case we switch products. The product ID could change if we change products, but the row won't change. So in column L, we'll take on that. That's it. L, we're going to simply extract whatever is the existing. This is for existing items. I'm just going to extract the database row from column U, and this is for existing items. Okay, once I have that, all I need to do is then just take everything, copy everything here, and then paste it directly into or value to value and bring it directly in here. So the name all the way over to the item ID all the way through K and just bring it in one line of code. So that simply means B through K, whatever row equals whatever is equal to K through T. And that's just what we did here. B through K equals K through T. That's save item data. That's it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to update that list. I want to update in case I've made any changes to the name I want, or the on hand. I want to update this list accordingly. And this shouldn't happen. Notice that, that when I selected more cells, something happened. I don't want that to happen. If I select one, fine. But if I select multiple, I don't want anything to happen. I don't want that to happen. So how do we avoid that? Well, that's easy in the selection change event. So we're going to go into the BOM assembly. The first thing we're going to do on selection change if target dot let's do count large is greater than one then exit sub so now if i select on more than one nothing happens and that's what i want okay all right very good so we've got that so we understand how we're saving it now that we understand this we can hide these so we see that database so, so now i can i can hide it go back to hiding it so that you're getting lots of practice on how to hide the data in these columns with using those semicolons. Okay, so now that we have that, so we understand how to save it, we understand, let's take a look at the next macro because we've already just fixed on that save and update. And we're going to let the user know through a message box. The next one's load. Now we saw that. We know that this is triggered when we, when we uh, click here. We see that, but we didn't see exactly what happens inside the macro. And here's that macro. Okay, so what at first of all, I want to make sure that we actually have a row that's associated for that database. That row is very important. That's located in B4. If there's no row, then we can let the user know to please select a select on a finished product to load. Okay, considering we have that, we're going to turn off application screen updating. Make sure we turn it on before the macro ends or before we exit out of it. Again, for that, we want to delete any add item or delete item. So these two, I want to hide this one and I want to hide this one. So when we load it up, I want to make sure those both of those shapes are hidden. We're going to clear out a bunch of cells, just all the fields associated with it. Certainly not to make sure we don't clear out the, anything that has formula attached to it. And then what we want to do is I want to set that product row in a long variable from B4. We're going to run a macro from product 2 to 7, and we're going to bring in that information. Now, it's very important. We also want to add in some formulas here, which we haven't done. I want to bring in uh, only those cost per item. These things I want to save inside our uh, finished goods here. So batch cost, item cost, certain these things are, I want to save them here, but I don't want to, I don't want to bring this information here inside this batch cost to the assemblies and why not? Because it's gonna be a formula. Let's do that formula now. So what's gonna be our total raw goods? Well, we're gonna look up raw goods. If we remember, it's based on here. So we wanna use a sum if, and that's going to help us determine that. I wanna know all the raw goods. So we're gonna equals sum if, and what is the range, right? The range is gonna be based on this item type. So we can use a large row. And I only wanna know those associated with raw goods. So it's gonna be raw, Good. So anything with raw goods, we're going to then total. And what it was is the sum range here. The sum range is going to be based on that total cost. I want to know all the costs of those raw goods. Again, selecting a large row. 
And that is it. That's all we need to determine the raw goods. Now, we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be other costs. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to paste it. And all I need to do now is change it from uh, raw goods. This one's going to be called other costs. So, and then lastly, I want to do the finished goods. So this one, if I add one in here, let's just update that. I'm going to put in a finished goods so that we can make sure that it is totally right and everything looks like, okay, we're going to have some blueberry muffins with our chocolate cake. Uh, that's, I always like that. Okay, so now what we have is something called finished goods. So I want to make sure that this one is going to be called not raw goods, but finished goods. And we have two, and that's going to be 286. Perfect. Okay, so now what are our total batch costs? Our total batch cost is simply equal. We could do two things, equal to sum. We could just do this total cost regardless of type, and then just use a large row. That's our total batch cost. So we have 112 for that batch. What is the cost per item? Well, the cost per item, obviously, if we have a batch quantity of 10 and a total cost, we can simply just use division. So it's going to be equals, and I'll wrap it in if error. And it's going to be our batch cost divided by the total batch quantity here. And then that's it. And then all we need to do is just if there's an error, just do this. Okay, that looks good. And then we're going to, that's going to determine. So our cost per item is eleven twenty three. Well, and we're going to sell it for twenty eight ninety nine. What's our profit per item? Well, our profit per item is simply equal to the sales price minus the cost per item. Subtract out that cost per item we know that we have that profit. But what about our, our profit percentage per item? That's gonna be a percentage, so make sure that we select percentage. So what is the formula? Okay, again, we're also gonna wrap that on if error in case there's an error, so equals if error. And then it is simply going to be J7 divided by H7. And what is an H7? So that's sales price. All right, if there's an error, we're gonna do, okay, so that means our profit percentage is 61%. And as you can see, our profit is more than 50%. If our sale price is 28 and our profit is 1776, we see our profit's 61%. Okay, very good, I like that. I'm just gonna justify these to the left so that we know that they're associated with that and all right this one looks good these are good i like that these are should be formatted the same both in accounting or currency either one keeping them equal everything looks good so the idea is when we are loading it we don't want, we don't want to upset these formulas right i want to save this information in the database but i don't want to bring it back in so none of this information and that is why when we are loading and we're only going up to column seven right let's take a look inside the finished goods so you can understand what i mean so if we see here we see that we have the sales price and the picture and the batch cost but the batch cost is column eight so we call them we're not going to that the last column is the picture that we're going to so that's the last thing i want to say but i don't want to load in this information here these are all calculated fields that's why they're all at the end i put all my calculated fields at the end so that's it. So it's just going to load in all these items. So basically when we load it, all we're taking is this and putting it in H4, taking in this and putting in L4 and so on and so forth. So now that we have that, that's how we're going to loop. Okay, next up, what I want to do is I want to load the quantity on hand. That's the last thing inside N4 is going to take on that quantity on hand. N4 will take that on. Now that we have that quantity on hand inside there, the next step is to be able to focus on those BOM items, right? So inside those items, I want to determine the last row. We've already loaded and I want to load these in. How do we know what items are associated? Well, we know the product ID. So I want to bring in all the items that are associated with this product ID. If we look inside the BOM items, we, if we know the product ID and we've linked it here, BOM Assemblies B3, then I can simply load in all of the items that are associated with that BOM and bring them directly inside here. And that's just what we're going to be doing through an advanced filter. We're gonna focus on those items. If it's last row, we're gonna exit the sub. We don't know if it's less than four, no reason to, to continue. We're gonna run that advanced filter. We're gonna go all the way through column L. That's our last row. So we're gonna go all the way from a3 through L, the criteria is gonna be Q2 through Q3, and the results are gonna come directly inside T2 all the way through AD. So we want those results to come here. And that's just what we've done inside this line of code here, determining the last results row. If it's less than three, we're gonna to go to no items. We're gonna set the initial item row to 11. This is where our first row is gonna go. I want that first here, row here. Okay, so we can do that. Now we're gonna run a loop for the result row equals three to the last result row. And just line by line, I'm bringing them in and I'm not upsetting the total, keeping the total here. So 
The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do it in two parts. Inside that BOM items, I'm gonna bring the name all the way up to the purchase cost here, and then item and ID. We're skipping AB because we don't really need that. That doesn't necessarily need to be. So I'm just gonna bring it all the way from T through AA, and then AC and AD. So bringing that information into the individual row, all the way from K through R, and then T and U. Skipping S because it's automatically calculated. And that's what we do here in these two lines of code. K through R is gonna come T through AA, bring over the item details. And lastly, T through U equals AC through AD. So AC through AD right in here, uh, AC through AD, and then all the way up to AA, skipping AB. Okay, so that's how we bring in all the item rows. Perfect. Okay, next up, we have delete. What if I want to delete an individual? Deleting a BOM, how do we do that? That's going to be the macro that we've tied to this one. And that's simply, we're going to first ask them, are you sure you want to delete? When I click this, are you sure you want to delete this finished product? If they say no, we're going to exit the sub. We're going to determine is B4 saved or not. For example, if I've added a new item and I've started typing in something here and I decide to delete it, oh, there's it's not been saved, B4 is empty. So if we say yes, it simply just clears it out and reloads the list. Very good. So we can skip to not saved if it hasn't been saved, going all the way down to here to not saved. If it has been saved before it does have a value, I want to determine that product row inside B5, that product row. Okay, that product row is going to be in B4, and that's called the product row. And then what we want to do is delete it from our finished goods, deleting that entire product. I also want to delete the BOM items, all the items that are associated here. Again, we need to run an advanced filter. Let's pull something up with some data, chocolate cake. One of my favorites. So we're going to run an advanced filter. All the results are going to come here. And then I'm going to determine the sort by the database row. Well, you don't need to sort. Clearing the contents of each one of those and then resorting this list. So that's what we're going to do. Running that advanced filter, deleting the BM. So the last row we've already got, we've already got the row. So we don't need to run the advanced filter. It's already here. We're going to determine the last row based on column K. So each individual, but we also we also have those rows here, right? We also have them in column U. So if we know the rows, and there's a database row associated here inside column U, see this is 14 right here, all the way up here. This is 15. If we double click, we can see it, the value. So we know, if we know the database rows here, I know which row to clear out. So we can loop. So the last row based on column K, if the last row is less than seven, that means we have no items. For the item row equals last row to 11. I'm just going to do it in reverse order because I like to clear out in reverse order. Minus step one. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to delete the entire rows in reverse order. Another way we can do it is clear the contents and then restart the list. But we're just deleting them in reverse order here. And that's it. Then we're going to add the new BOM and then restore the product list. So let me show you how that would work. Adding a new BOM and then just put in a test product here and we'll give it a product type here. And uh, we don't need to browse for a picture and test here and the batch quantity here and the sales price as here. Okay, so we can add another idea here. So adding the chocolate cake here to that. Please select the item quantity. Oops, it's important. Okay, so we can save it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to delete it. So deleting it, or you should want to delete this? Yes. Then it's going to clear everything out. It's going to remove it from here. And now we see that it is gone. If we take a look in the BOM items, we see that there's no item associated with that here. And if we take a look inside the finished goods here, we see that there's no delete. So it's already been deleted. Okay, so that's on delete. Very cool. Now what about item browse for picture? Remember, we had to browse for picture. If we have a new item, I want to be able to browse for that picture and locate that picture wherever it is. If we have got a list of pictures up here and then here and then this one here. So I've got some pictures here. If I want to add a, some bananas here and I can add a picture. So there's a macro. That's the macro that's already tied to this. Uh, we're going to determine the item pictures of file dialog. We're going to set the picture folder value equal to empty. If it is empty, that picture folder that's in the admin screen or it's incorrect, we're going to let the user know to please select a folder for the item to add. Okay, picture folder, we're going to set the variable string variable picture folder equals picture folder. The item pick is going to be application file dialog file picker. With the item picture, we're going to set the title, please select an item picture. We're going to give it some filters. These are the type of pictures. 
If they haven't selected anything, we're going to go to no selection. We're going to set the picture path based on the picture folder and the directory, right? That's important. If the select item picture path equals skip copy, basically what I want to do is I want to take wherever they found the picture and I want to put it in this folder. But what if I've already, it's already in the folder where I want to put it? Maybe it's already there. So in that case, I don't want to create an error. If the original place that you found the picture equals the same as where you want to put it, then we don't need to copy it to that location. We can skip it. However, if it is not, we can use file copy. It's original location. We're going to copy it to the picture folder and the directory of the select item. This basically means the picture name, like bananas.png. That's the picture name. Okay, then what we're going to do is I'm going to take that name and I want to put it into P4 right here. Okay, great. So that's all. And then I want to run a macro called show picture. With show picture, that's a macro right here. All we're going to do is deleting any existing picture that might be there. And then if P4 equals empty, that's where the picture name is, we can exit the sub. We're going to get the full picture path. It's going to be based on the picture folder, a backslash, and P4. That's the full path. If for some reason the picture equals empty or it's incorrect, we can exit the sub out. Or maybe just a period. We're going to insert the picture path. We're going to give it a very specific name called product picture. And then we're going to position that. If the width is greater than the height, we're going to set the width to 80 and the height to 55. We could probably reduce that a little bit here to 70. And we can run that again. So how do we do that? So we can just basically lock in the aspect ratio to make sure it is given that we don't change the ratio of that. And we also want to make sure to set the left position based on the R for the left position and the top position. And then basically I want to just split the width of the columns R through S. I'm going to take the width of those columns. I want to subtract the width of the picture and divide it by two. That's going to center it. I'm going to do the th same thing for the top. We're going to take the height of rows four through seven. We're going to subtract the height of the picture and divide that by two. We're adding that to the top position. That's going to display the picture. Okay, very, very cool. Well, I don't want to get this training too long. We did cover awesome. We did cover this whole thing. So now we want to go, I want to go over a brief overview. And then what we'll do is we're going to get that continuation on the Patreon platform, right? So here we have the BOM assemblies. This application is just too large for a single training. Obviously, multi-parts don't really work. I want to do something brand new next week. So we've shown you this delete. We've added add items here. What else do we have in this incredible training? We've got work orders. If I take a look at work orders, and I had a brand new work order. We just created a brand new product. But what if I want to add those products to that? Let's say I want to add a blueberry muffin to that. I want to add the full batch of that muffin. So we can add the individual item cost. We can add that. I want to show you, of course, I want to show you how to do that, how to add that. I want to show you how to add purchase orders. How do we create purchase orders? How do we calculate the quantity on hand once we've purchased something? What about the status? What does that have to do with it? And how do we create this incredible menu? Obviously, this training is quite large, so I can't cover everything in this, but we're going to do a lot more next Monday on Patreon. So we're going to create this menu and, of course, the incredible dashboard. How do we get that to happen? I'll be covering that on because I want to try to limit these. This is already almost two hours long, so we do want to try to limit these. Dashboard is great. So I'm going to be covering that plus anything you want to know, put it on our Patreon platform. Also, keep in mind, if you're on YouTube, you also get this. YouTube memberships is exactly the same as Patreon Silver. So keep that in mind. If you can be on either one, you're going to get exactly the same. You would not necessarily want to be on both. So YouTube Silver or Patreon uh, Silver and Gold, both of those get all these values. And we're going to be doing a lot more on this. And I'll be covering the remainder of this training on that platform. Let me know what you think. Did you like this video? Did you like training? You see how BOM assemblies can be super powerful when we do that. Let's go ahead and add this. We want to do an if error if there's no data in here. Add that on if error so we don't need that. I'll be doing lots of different fixes, lots of different items on these. And I can't wait to hear what you think as we continue this on our Patreon platform next week. Thank you so much for your continued support. I hope to see you next week right here. Let me know your ideas. This manufacturing bakery manager came with a lot of suggestions. So I do appreciate those. This channel is for you. So we'll keep working on that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your continued support. Don't forget to click the like button. Share this video if you do like it. You can find us in our Excel for Freelancers group. And of course, if you like these templates and you want to help out the channel, I've got 250 of my best templates available for you in one single zip file. So that will help us out. And don't forget, if you want to be a successful freelancer, I've got an incredible 
course for freelancers called the Freelancers Academy Masterclass. It'll teach you how to be an uh, incredible freelancer earning passive income on your own. And that's regardless of your skill, even if it's not Excel. That is that. I hope you'll check that out and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Thank you.